Hey y'all, it's Fessy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So it is December here in Alabama, and my garden is finally going to sleep for the season. This week, honestly, is the first week that it is really starting to show that it's winter. You can see my lantana that was blooming even last week is starting to go dead in the middle. I'll need to trim that back to the ground, all of my annuals. I removed a lot of the annuals to make room for pansies and cabbage and other fall plants. But the things like the lantana that is a perennial in our zone, I'm not gonna remove. We'll just cut it back or leave it to cut back next spring, whichever way you prefer. Um, I, I will do some this fall, some next spring, just kind of depends on my mood and where they are in the garden. This one being front and central, I will cut back so that I don't have a big pile of dead sticks when you come up to my house. But while a lot of things are going to sleep, the pansies, the cabbages, the ranunculuses, my muscari, there are still things blooming, coming to life, showing color, and I am really excited to take you around the garden and just show you what everything looks like this month. My little dwarf Alberta spruce is the cutest thing in the garden at the moment, so drink it in and we will get started as always over in front of the shed. All right, so y'all can see that this half of the yard has pretty much gone to sleep for the winter. I need to clean out the raised beds. I'm hoping to get some landscape fabric down and paint inside the shed in January. So maybe next year we'll be able to utilize this full space. But the roses are starting to go to sleep. Still need deadheaded. You can see that since I haven't deadheaded them, they're putting a lot of energy into creating rose hips, which I don't know. I have to ask mom if that's necessarily what I want the plants to do. They are pretty. Um, well, maybe I'll leave them for the winter if it's not bad. I don't know too much about rose hips, but obviously you can see like this, this little guy has decided to grow more on the right than the left. So in the spring, before these guys flush out with new growth, they will need to be reshaped. And I could deadhead this one enough so it's not totally wonky, but you don't want to do too much deadheading right before it gets too cold. So my oak leaf is still doing these beautiful colors. And then a lot of the other plants have completely died back for the winter. And I just, I need to come out and do just a garden cleanup of cutting back these kinds of things. But our foxgloves that we planted that were F1s, these are beautiful we grew them from seed uh they they bloomed for us this year and you can see they are still growing bigger and they will bloom again for us next year is that the amaranth i'm trying to think of the name i just did a video on planting those and they are doing great and then we come to the color of the garden so this is why i plant pansies for fall and winter in my zone. It's literally the middle of December. And as long as we don't get down under 30 degrees for multiple days, these will bloom for us all winter, literally all winter. If we get down under 30, which sometimes we do for a week or two in January, they might stop blooming for a week or two, but they pretty much bloom for me all fall, all winter into spring. So I love it. On the other hand, our kales and cabbages are doing fabulous. And you can see all our ranunculus. These are the ones we planted last year. They are, they are killing it, you guys. The wisteria and crepe myrtles are all going to sleep. You might have noticed over by the shed, I have a brand new army of milk jugs. We finally got the puppies and, uh, foxgloves planted for next year and speaking of puppies right here I'll put some footage up but these three little poppies we planted you can see they have buds they are blooming this one 
that just bloomed was a beautiful salmon orange color, uh, pinkish orange. So I'm very excited. Our foxglove is still blooming. And then we have my favorite spot in the garden at the moment, pansies, cabbages, and my new dwarf Alberta spruce. So this guy grows about one or two inches a year. So every year, We'll move him out for the spring and let the foxgloves come up here, plant more foxgloves. And then once the foxgloves are actually done for the season, we can come put this guy here and he can just be a little pot that we plant things under. And I'm very excited about that. The cabbages are doing really well. And I actually have a fifth one I need to pop right here that I picked up. I wasn't planning to. They were a dollar at Tractor Supply. So I was like, I'll grab another one. But if I don't get it in the ground, we also have two ranunculus here that are coming back from last year. And I think I only had a few right here. I had a lot more foxgloves coming back last year. And while we will pack this whole area out with foxgloves next spring, um, I do have more ranunculus corms to plant for the season. So I think I will plant like right in here or maybe back in here. I don't know. I will plant more ranunculus corms to go with this one for, I might just do like a little group of three and a little group of three over here, maybe just little pops. We will of course in January come through and plant tulips and I have a couple hundred tulip bulbs to plant this year and more muscari. You can see that the muscari is already coming up. That will bloom for us next spring. Even under the lantana that needs cut back. See all that uh, muscari in there? I was afraid that the lantana was so big, the muscari wasn't getting enough sun and it would have died under those plants, but it didn't. It's doing just fine. So we'll have to cut this back. The lantana should come back in our zone, so we won't take it out, but we'll cut it back so that the muscari and tulips that are planted all throughout here can shine in the spring before the lantana takes off in the summer. Plus, you know, there is a big debate on whether cleaning things up in the fall or spring is better. It's better for some wildlife if you leave things for them to overwinter in, but it's warm here. There's more than enough for bugs and small animals to overwinter in. I don't need to leave this giant tumbleweed next to my front door. So we're going to take it up, leaving the rest of the garden, including our little last fall moment of mums and pumpkins. They've had a little bit of color, a little bit of color all the way up to now. It's just starting to really actually die back and the purple is leaving. So we will leave these in the pots over winter. We could place replace them with evergreens. They're beautiful plants. I'm going to leave them and plant them out first thing next spring. And hopefully they will live for us. On the other hand, our pansies here still look fabulous. Cabbage is doing well. You can see right over here, muscari tips coming up. So We'll have muscari in among the pansies. We have a whole swath of tulips right here. We'll have to put in some more ranunculus corms. And for some reason, our last little rosebud of the season, go into town, go for it. We need to clean out all these gladiolus stems that are done for the season. And then this is all a uh, verbena still green so we'll cut that back once it dies probably next spring but verbena here in my yard was the first thing to start blooming next spring very very early so let's hope that this is a pink verbena it was the homestead purple that did so well last year and they're slightly different varieties so let's hope that this is doing well on top of my pink cushion flowers and the salvia that's still green and then we have catmint. That is a new perennial that we just put in, and hopefully it will come up next spring and do well. Got all our foxgloves back here. 
This is an agapanthus that blooms all through the summer. It was beautiful this year. Gumfrena, we grew, grew all of this from seed and it was fabulous. I'll put a picture up on the screen if I can find one, but it's a raspberry color and I'm gonna be growing raspberry, pink and white next summer because I really liked these. From here, we have a lantana here and there. And then this whole area, I typically put petunias in and you can see one of the petunias um, and they usually come back. They didn't come back super strong this year. So I think, I don't know, I, I might switch things, move the lantana back here because it got pretty big, move the petunias out to be more front of the border pieces. And I'm thinking I might ring this with Gara, which comes up and is airy and tall and beautiful in our zone and comes back every year. And maybe that will do better than the petunias. Because while the petunias do wonderful for me and my area, moms go strong all summer long. Mine tend to go to sleep sooner than a lot of my other plants. And I did plant this entire field with ranunculus corms last year. Only one is coming back here. So while almost every single corm is coming back down under that sun tree, where it's a little shadier here, only one is coming back. So I will probably dig him up and pop him down there. We'll do something else here. This whole area just needs to be rethought and that's okay. We rethought this whole area around the tree last year and it's doing much better. So we have a butterfly bush going to sleep for the season, salvia going to sleep. Oh, my water's coming on. I need to turn the water off for the season. Roses, all the cyclamen. Look how many leaves there are. We even have a couple blooms over here. All in all, I want to still add more foxtail ferns over here. I have peonies that come up in the spring. Have to ice them all winter, starting in January. Hopefully, we this will be their third year, so we might actually get a bloom this year. We'll find out. And then on top of that, we have uh, some lupins that we planted down here that I'm hoping will bloom this year. So it was a very exciting year and everything is looking really good for next year. And that is the garden for the month of December. Some things alive, some things going to sleep. So many things getting ready for next year. And that is always the fun part of the end of the season. While it's sad that that season's over and the garden looks kind of, I don't wanna say pathetic, but pathetic. <laughs> There's so much that you can see getting ready, growing, blooming, storing up energy for next year. So I can't wait for next spring. And in the meantime, everything in life needs a break. And that includes me. I need some no garden maintenance months here, baby. So we're gonna go ahead Go back in the house and I will see y'all for the garden tour in January where things will be even further asleep. Bye y'all.